Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Unity North Spiritual Center this morning. My name is Rhonda Italiano. I am filling in for Reverend Kathy. She is a little bit under the weather, so she asked us to carry on with our burning bowl service. So we're happy to have all of you here with us. As Reverend Kathy tells us every Sunday morning, we are very happy to have you join us. Whoever you are, wherever you are on your spiritual path, you are welcome here and we are happy to see you this morning. My name is Rhonda. I am joined this morning by Howard Grinzel. He will be our worship assistant this morning. Claire Vandekromert is providing music support this morning. And in the back, <clears throat> excuse me, we have Chris and Brandy who are our producers. So let's give everybody a welcome, please. Very good. And with that, I am going to ask you all to stand up as we sing our opening song. Spirit calls, come up higher. Spirit calls, I believe. Spirit calls, come up higher. Lord, lifts us up. Sets us free. Spirit calls, come up higher. Spirit calls, I believe. Spirit calls, come up higher. Love lifts us up, sets us free. Sets us free from our lack or limitation. Sets us free to realize who we can be. We are free and unlimited in light, truth, and love. Spirit calls, so stand up and believe. Spirit calls, come up higher. Spirit calls, I believe. Spirit calls, come up higher. Love lifts us up, sets us free. Sets us free from all lack or limitation. Sets us free to realize who we can be. We are free and unlimited in light, truth, and love. Spirit calls, so stand up and believe. 
spirit calls, come up higher, spirit calls, I believe, spirit calls, come up higher, love lifts us up, sets us free, love lifts us up and sets us free. Welcome. I'll just take just a quick moment to um, acknowledge each other. If there's anyone new here on Zoom, you can wave your hand or say hello. And are there any new people here in person today? If you're comfortable enough to just raise your hand and tell us your name and how you found us. All right. Well, we are all blessed by each other's presence, and we are all right here, right now. Um, you know, prayer is at the heart of unity. And uh, the personal prayer today, if you join me if you wish, you, know, you may close your eyes. Moving from our head to our heart, we take a slow, deep, centering breath, breathing in with our entire body. And today we offer prayers of healing for Reverend Kathy, who is battling a terrible cold. We see her healed and strong, healthy and whole, in her body, and in our, her soul. And we see ourselves healed and strong, healthy and whole, in our body and in our soul. <coughs> For any other prayers you have, we can release them now in silence. We give thanks in advance for answered prayers, and we say, say thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Please remain centered for today's daily word. For Sunday, New Year's Eve, 2023, the word for today is let go, let God. With a grateful heart, I bid the year farewell. As the year draws to a close, I reflect upon the joyful times as well as the lower points of the past several months. In a prayerful moment of contemplation, I feel gratitude as I accept all of it. I may have laughed and cried, celebrated and grieved, but I made it. As days turned into weeks and weeks into months, I have met the year's events with faith and have grown resilient. Now it's time for me to let it all go as I prepare to begin again. I take the lessons of the last 12 months, their joys and sorrows, and prepare myself for the new year. I let go and let God as I spiritually surrender my hopes and dreams and even my fears. I am divinely guided and infinitely blessed. I step boldly and bravely into a year that is mine to live to the fullest. Psalms 4. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. And today's daily word is let go, let God.
I'm diving in to the deepest kind of love, to the sweetest kind of life. Get ready, get ready, oh my soul. Everything I've ever done. seen everything I've lost or won everything I've ever dreamed has brought me The lesson this morning is called A New Time. William Vaughn, an optimist, excuse me, William Vaughn said, an optimist stays up until midnight to see the new year in, and a pessimist stays up to make sure the old year leaves. <laughs> so, which are you this year? Are you an optimist or are you a pessimist? I think for many of us, the answer is both. Since we are ready to let go of 2023, and we're also very much looking forward to a new year. At the same time, I would imagine many of us are feeling some trepidation since 2024 is an election year. Someone said, I'm not buying a 2024 calendar until I see the trailer. <laughs> the election is a reality that pervades everything since it is a more serious election year than we've ever had in our lifetimes. And we know what happened post-election last time. 
and so this one looms much larger. That is something to release in the burning bowl ceremony today. Fears about the upcoming election, its results and its aftermath. Fears of losing our democracy, fears of a successful coup, or whatever you are fearing. You will have an opportunity to write down what you wish to let go of. And in the last part of the ceremony where we write letters to God, not only can we give thanks for whatever we hope for personally, but also we can give thanks in advance collectively for a wondrous positive election outcome and aftermath. We can give thanks that the forces of chaos are subdued and that peace prevails. We give thanks for our freedom and for the rights of women restored and for all groups and people to be treated with acceptance and loving kindness. Remember that in our prosperity, sometimes we need to give thanks before our good is visible. We can also give thanks in advance for the ending of war and a Ukrainian victory and for a resolution of the war between Israel and Hamas and more successful humanitarian aid and support for all those who are suffering in Gaza and Israel, in Ukraine and Russia and throughout the world. We can give thanks for divine order and guidance for our world leaders and decision makers. So our ceremony today is a powerful one for letting go and affirming the new for release and for affirmation and renewal, personally and globally. New Year's resolutions tend to be about wanting more of something we desire and or less of something we do not. And while they surely have their noble side, they also often emanate from subtle and less subtle forms of perceived lack, scarcity, comparison, and judgment the should and should not messages we send ourselves when we make resolutions can be harsh and incriminating. These are qualities we may want to endeavor not to perpetuate and strengthen when we make our commitments this year. Our letters to God pave the way because we write them in gratitude, giving thanks in advance. And if we should have resolutions beyond that, we might want to call them intentions instead. And let's put gratefulness rather than scarcity at the center of those intentions. Rather than a long list of shoulds, we are expressing gratitude in advance. It is strange, isn't it, how time is a human-made construct and how the stories we tell about it become so powerful in informing our lives. One day is the ending of a year and the next day is the beginning of another since our calendar tells us that and we accept the story or collective belief about it. It becomes a cultural myth with a lot of power, and it does help us to begin anew. One of the great healing functions of myth is to show us that we are not alone with our feelings, fears, conflicts, and aspirations. We are not alone. We are one part of a great story that is repeated over and over again throughout time. Time itself is a mythological construct. According to mythologist Paul Cousineau, he said, everywhere technology is seducing us to think we have no choice but to save a moment here, an hour there, and so finally be happy. A mythology that says time is chasing us means we must stay young and avoid aging at all costs. We should instead be influenced by stories of people like Grandma Moses, who was painting at 100, Bertrand Russell, who was active in international peace drives at 94, George Bernard Shaw, who wrote a play at 93, Clara Barton, who founded the American Red Cross at 60, Albert Schweitzer, who headed a hospital in Africa at 89, and our own Mary Baker Eddy, who was the director of Christian Science Church at 89. And what about a presidential candidate in his 80s? Regardless of who your candidate is, instead of demeaning his age, is there another way to look at that? I love this story told by Unity writer and author of The Prayer for Protection, James Dillett Freeman. He said, just a few months after my 21st birthday, I attended a 79th birthday party that I have never forgotten. It was Charles Fillmore's. 
I had finished school and had just begun working at Unity. I went to a workers' meeting and Mr. Fillmore, co-founder of Unity, was the speaker. He said, today is my birthday. I am 79. Seven plus nine. That adds up to 16, doesn't it? Sweet 16 is what I am today. <laughs> Phil Cousineau also said, we are paralyzed by the myth of speed that tells us we will fall behind if we slow down. It is a myth that creates more and more access to information, but also burnout. The old myth said, time and tides wait for no one. The founding myth of our culture said, time is money. The streamlined myth says, speed is God and we are its converts. So the important question is, are you going to live by chronos, clock time, or kairos, sacred time? The way we beguile time is by seizing life, moment by moment, remembering the present, one day at a time, and even one moment at a time. We can consciously change our myth of time by pausing to experience timelessness, allowing ourselves to slow down and to remember. The past is history, the future is mystery, and the now moment is a gift. That's why it's called the present. Not once upon a time, not hereafter, but right now. That is one of the mysteries of New Year's Eve, since we reach the liminal moment of threshold, where we stand right between the past and the future, celebrating it together as one people all over the world. We can pause and do that on any given day, but on this particular eve, we all recognize and acknowledge it collectively. It is a moment imbued with incredible power, in some Celtic traditions, those in-between times are magical and promising. The possibilities are endless because the old thing is ending and the new thing hasn't started yet. That betwixt and between time is filled with infinite possibility. I have a few stories I'd like to share with you about time and celebrations. This one is called Finding Love in the Bush in New South Wales, Australia. One woman fell in love so could easily remember a special New Year's Eve, and especially since it was the turn of the millennium. She wrote, I wanted to spend the millennial New Year away from the city, so I attended a 10-day meditation retreat set on the side of a mountain among lots of bush and wildlife in New South Wales, Australia. Hundreds of others had the same idea, many from around the world. On New Year's Eve, the retreat, which had been going for several days, paused to allow for the kind of party a new millennium deserves, which in this case meant an eclectic mix of people, languages, food, and music. In the wee hours, stumbling through the dark forest to my tent without a torch, I ran into an Italian man in the same predicament, so we stumbled along together. When we finally reached our tents, we noticed an open space lit by the crescent moon a little distance away, so we kept on walking. With the Milky Way twinkling above and the sound of the ocean below, we talked until the kookaburras heralded the rising sun, whose light revealed kangaroos quietly grazing in the grass around us. It felt quite magical and auspicious. And I guess it was. This coming new year, my husband and I will be celebrating not only a new year, but also 20 years together. The next one is called A Case of, a case of Delayed Gratification in Al Calafate, Argentina. A man, Piers Pickard, writes about the same New Year's, December 31st, 1999. I stood with most of the town on the lake shore of El Calafate, Argentina, awaiting midnight fireworks from the islet just opposite. We started the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one, nothing. No fireworks. Should we have cheered? Was that it? Was it midnight? Watches were examined. The crowd muttered, confused. 
Then someone official spoke up, explaining that the mayor had just gotten married on the stroke of midnight. Naturally, he didn't want to miss the fireworks, so they would start shortly. Angry boos rang out from the beer-fueled crowd. A bottle was thrown. Realizing they might have a mob on their hands, the pyrotechnicians started quickly lighting fireworks. As the first explosion lit the sky, the dry grass of the island caught fire. The blaze spread quickly, sending the fireworks up rapid fire before it. The lake glowed orange in the flames. Above, sky was booming mass of color and light, hard to imagine. It was the best New Year's Eve fireworks ever. <laughs> One last story. A woman writes, soppy story alert. I met a beguiling gentleman on a trip to the Vietnamese island of Phu Quoc on a break from my teaching duties in Hanoi, who stood out to, due to his humor and manners, as well as a brilliant red burn and his title as the burger-eating champion of the island. After we connected online and got to know each other, he asked me if I'd like to go on a date if he ever returned to Vietnam. I said yes, not imagining I'd ever meet him again. Six months later, he flew from Ireland to Hanoi for New Year's Eve. And as we toasted the new year with my Hanoi family on the roof of a posh restaurant, we shared our first kiss. We are now married and live in Dublin. And as far as I know, he remains the reigning burger-eating champ of Phu Quoc. Returning to the idea of time once again, Stephen B. Cloud wrote something titled, A Year of Time. Though even thinking on the subject of time may prove discomforting, it is not a bad idea, especially at the beginning of a new year. As we look into 2024, we look at a block of time. We see 12 months, 52 weeks, 365 days, 8,760 hours, 525,600 minutes, 31,536,000 seconds. And all is a gift from God. We have done nothing to deserve it, earn it, or purchase it. Like the air we breathe, time comes to us as a part of life. The gift of time is not ours alone. It is given equally to each person, rich and poor, educated and ignorant, strong and weak. Every man, woman, and child has the same 24 hours every day. Another important thing about time is that you cannot stop it. There is no way to slow it down, turn it off, or adjust it. Time marches on, and you cannot bring back time. Once it is gone, it is gone. Yesterday is lost forever. If yesterday is lost, tomorrow is uncertain. We may look ahead at a full year's block of time, but we really have no guarantee that we will experience any of it. Obviously, time is one of our most precious possessions. We can waste it, we can worry over it, we can spend it on ourselves, or as good stewards, we can invest it in the kingdom of God. In unity, we would say the unfolding of our Christ consciousness. The new year is full of time. As the seconds tick away, will we be tossing time out the window or will we make every minute count? And finally, Taylor Addison writes about time as well, expressing what we might want to do with it beyond every second counting. Her writing is called Time for New Beginnings. This is a time for reflection as well as celebration. As you look back on the past year and all that has taken place in your life, remember each experience for the good that has come of it and for the knowledge you have gained. Remember the efforts you have made and the goals you have reached. Remember the love you have shared and the happiness you have brought. Remember the laughter, the joy, the hard work, and the tears. And as you reflect on the past year, also be thinking of the new one to come. Because most importantly, this is a time of new beginnings and the celebration of life. May you remember to experience the sacred this New Year's Eve tonight and New Year's Day tomorrow 
and throughout 2024. Happy New Year, and God bless you. Gonna set it free, let things be, let the thrill of life carry me, cause I know I'm in the flow, I'm finally free, oh blessed me, gonna set it free, let things be, let the thrill of life carry me, cause I know I'm in the flow. Finally free, oh blessed be Life unfolds with grace and ease Endless possibilities They're everywhere, they've always been When I choose to let them be Gonna set it free, let things be Let the thrill of life carry I know I'm in the flow I'm finally free Oh, blessed be And I've outgrown those smaller dreams The way they used to limit me I make the space Invite love in Magic feels my life again i set it free Let things be let the thrill of life carry me Cause I know I'm in the flow Finally free, oh blessed be There's something bigger calling me To follow where my passion leads I trust the flow, don't need to know what Finally free, oh blessed be, I'm finally free, oh blessed be. Thank you again. So we want to talk about the burning bowl ceremony. Many of you are familiar with it, of course, and have gone through it. For those of you that haven't, I just wanted to explain a little bit about what's going to happen. So the ceremony is hybrid today, which is a little different, so I'll explain both for the virtual people and those of you in person. Uh, we want everybody to have their packet ready that you've received uh, over the weeks, if you have it, and they will be the same for those here and in person. You should have small pieces of paper a uh, pen to write with, a piece of stationery, and an envelope. If you don't have those, uh, the usher can uh, get those for you. Now, when it's time, uh, you can actually write on the small piece of paper on both sides if you need to, or you can raise your hand and get another uh, piece of paper if needed. Uh, it doesn't really matter how clear the writing is because the paper is very hard to write on because we're going to be burning them and releasing them anyways. For those of you uh, on Zoom, you'll need to find a way to burn your papers. Uh, you can have a candle sitting on a plate, uh, any method that feels comfortable. Uh, you can tear them up, uh, throw them in your fireplace, uh, bring them to your trash can and imagine it's an incinerator, uh, whatever works for you. Uh, once you are done writing on the paper, Rhonda will then invite you up uh, to cast your paper into the fire. Now there's a camera in the back, uh, so we ask you if when you come up on either side, we'll go up the center aisles, to kind of step lightly to the side if you can, so the people on Zoom can uh, kind of see what's going on. Uh, please just toss your paper into the bowl. Do not try to hold it. 
and, and see that it ignites. Uh, they burn very fast and we don't want anybody to get burned. Um, if it seems like your paper is not burning, just release it because it will catch fire and uh, be gone before we are done. Once you cast your uh, paper in the fire, uh, you can just return on the side aisles to your seats. We ask that you remain silent throughout the ceremony. Um, once everybody uh, is completed with their papers, uh, Claire will play us a song and then we will have a meditative moment to all briefly write a letter to God, which Rhonda will explain later in the service. But for now, just have everything ready. Uh, we ask that you don't go ahead, you know, that you follow along uh, the process if you can. Uh, I think the old saying is don't anticipate, participate. Now the ceremony today is twofold. It includes the burning bowl followed by the writing our letters to God. Uh, Rhonda will lead you through that ceremony and then walk you through the letter to God. Uh, the burning bowl ceremony is a wonderful ritual of release where we let go of old patterns and old attitudes that no longer serve us by saying goodbye to the year 2023 and embracing and welcoming 2024. The ceremony is a wonderful tool for cleansing the subconscious mind of resentments, negative or false thoughts, beliefs, feelings, unforgiveness, attitudes, and concepts. Anything we want to let go of that no longer serves our highest good. The burning bowl process is a symbolic act to help impress the subconscious mind with the seriousness of the conscious mind. We are telling the subconscious that what we are burning is no longer to be used. The memory of what we are burning is to be deactivated as a hidden motive for action and its emotional energy is to be used in a new positive and creative way. By adding faith to our complete surrender, we help to make this happen. We do not have to have a mountain of faith. Just turning to God in faith will start the process. So Rhonda will now guide us through meditation and we'll let you know uh, when we will come up and release the small pieces of paper and when we will place them in the bowl. Please take a moment, take a deep breath, close your eyes. Say to yourself, I am completely and totally relaxed. Sometimes we need a little bit of repetition to really get there. Take a deep breath and say to yourself, I am completely and totally relaxed. I am completely and totally relaxed. Say to yourself silently, it is not I but the Christ within who does the work. It is not I but the Christ within who does the work. The past has served us well. It has brought us to this point. And we can be thankful for that. But by hanging on to the past, we cannot receive the gift that the present holds for us. We are so blessed with God's grace, God's love in action in our lives. January 1st has come reminding us that at any moment we can begin anew. Allow your breath to slow down as you become peaceful and filled with the healing presence of God.
I will continue in the first person, so let my words become your words. Feel them enter your heart, repeat them silently to yourself, and let them have meaning for you. Silently and to yourself say, I relax my body and clear my mind. I prepare to receive through the Holy Spirit. I prepare to receive images and impressions of those things which no longer serve my spiritual evolution. Holy Spirit, I invite your sacred presence into my awareness. Show me what needs to be forgiven. Bring to the surface my beliefs and attitudes that no longer serve me. Help me to clear out and forgive the past that I may be filled with the vitality of life. The past has no power over me. I forgive and release the past and allow the healing power of love into my life. God is my wholeness. I allow spirit to move through any area of my life where the flow of love has been blocked, where I may have sabotaged my good. I release it and let it go. I now release and forgive all the people and situations of my past that have caused me to hold on to any anger or resentment. I release any thoughts, hurts, or experiences that no longer serve me. I release the things that bring hurt to my heart, feelings of shame, guilt, unhealthy habits, or beliefs that are not useful to me right now. I assure myself that the load will be much lighter when people and old hurts are forgiven, when habits are let go, when attitudes and beliefs are transformed, when fears are brought into the light. Now I take a moment and reflect on myself. I am a child of God, both human and divine. I deserve self-forgiveness for any perceived shortcomings. I call forth compassion for myself. I call forth compassion for myself. I release and let go of any guilt, resentment, regret, fear, negative feelings or beliefs about myself, feelings of lack or limitation. I am a child of God, therefore made in God's image and likeness, and God loves me just as I am right now. I am a child of God, therefore made in God's image and likeness. And God loves me just as I am right now. Now you may slowly open your eyes, remaining in a silent meditative state 
write down what it is you wish to release. You can write on both sides of the paper or use more than one if needed. Please remain silent and in a moment, each of us in person will release our papers into the burning bowl. For those of you on Zoom, when it's time, you can burn your paper in a flame or tear it in pieces or whatever method you've created to release those things from the past. I will let you all know when it is time. Take another minute or so to finish up.
I let the Spirit of God work in me now. I know that it is not by might nor by power, but by Spirit. Do not hold on, but let it go. When you release the paper, let go from your mind everything that you have written, knowing that the living spirit of truth is healing and transforming everything right now. As you put your paper into the flame, say silently to yourself, I release, I let go, and I am free. I release, I let go, and I am free. Feel free now when you are ready to walk down the center aisle, stepping slightly to the side of the bowl and drop your paper into the flame, letting it go quickly, then return down the side aisles. Please remain in quiet meditation as you focus on your vision for 2024 until everyone is finished. And I will let you know when that is and we will begin our letters to God.
let us know and affirm, I am not bound to the past. I am made new through the power of the Christ in me. I release the old and ask that any obstacles within me now be taken away. I behold the new. I see myself in a new light. I see my strengths and count my blessings. I am now open to the good that lies before me. And now we will have, I am free, I am unlimited. song, we transition to our letters to God. In a moment, we will write our letters to God, setting our intentions for 2024. Writing our letters in gratitude, we give thanks to God for that which we are grateful to receive. I suggest writing your letter as though you are giving thanks in advance for your blessings in 2024 such as Dear God or Loving Spirit or whatever name you prefer, I give thanks for, I give thanks that. For those who are here in person when finished, write your address on the envelope. We will collect them at the end so that we can mail it to you in early fall. If you are on Zoom when you are done, you can put your letter in an envelope labeled Letter to God and write the date on it. Later, put it in a special place and then pull it out again and read it in September. So let us begin to write our letters to God, giving thanks in advance for that which you desire in 2024. There is great power in gratitude, so feel the gratitude as though you have already received your good. Please remain silent as you write your letter. So does everyone have all of the supplies that they need? Raise your hand so the usher can bring you something if you need it. Has everybody got a pen? We're good. All right. So we will stay now in the silence to allow everyone a few minutes to write. Thank you. 
your envelope please pass it to the center so the ushers can collect them
let us together know that today is a gateway, the gateway to our future, fresh and open, full of promise and opportunity. Behind us is everything that has happened to us in life, which has brought us to this moment at the beginning of a new year. Let us give thanks for every moment that has shaped us into who we are today. We step through the gateway and greet the new year 2024 with open arms and a clear heart. We go forward in a spirit of gratitude and positive anticipation. And now Claire will sing, I'm feeling good. So take in those words and feel them. see myself skipping into next year as a total optimist. <laughs> we are grateful for all of our blessings. Uh, we appreciate all the support and blessings that come to us, uh, whether you are supporting us financially or with your time. Uh, we are blessed to have the people online, and we are blessed to have all of you here. So please join me in our offering blessings together. Divine love flowing through me now blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and I am grateful.
wrap up our service here. We just have a few quick announcements. Next Sunday, we have the Whitestone Ceremony uh, on the 12th, which is a Friday night. And this is on Zoom, 12 power service with Reverend Kathy and Rhonda. And the next day on Saturday, uh, Noel Levine is hosting a men's group. Uh, for those of you that would qualify for that. And then Sunday, January 28th is a game and art day, just a kind of a fun day, uh, sort of like the movie night. And then the 30th of January, and this is a, um, a really big deal. Uh, if you haven't done this, we invite you to do so. It's a five-week class with Reverend Kathy, um, just about prayer and dynamic healing. So uh, please join us for that. And we'll finish up here. All right. If you would please stand and join me for the prayer for protection. We have the words here on the screen. The light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And then we will close with the peace song. <laughs>